Hello and welcome to the big picture. The ever increasing prices of food commodities and the generally high inflation fueled by growing international price of oil has kept the Indian economy on an edge for quite some time now. The repeated assurances by the government to bring the inflation under control have just remained that as the prices of essential commodities have continued on the northern curve. In the midst of this, the statement of the Union Minister of Steel, Beni Prasad Verma, the other day, that is happy with the inflation as the higher prices is beneficial to the farmers and that his government were in favour of the farmers has triggered a major debate in the country. How far is the minister's argument valid? Does it apply to all categories of farmers? What is the overall impact on the economy when inflation is high and especially on the farm sector? We will discuss this today while asking the question, are farmers gaining from inflation? To discuss this, I have with me today former Union Minister of State for Agriculture in the first NDA government, Sompal Shastri, Krishan Beer Chaudhary, President of Bharatiya Krishak Samaj, and Nikhil Day of the Mazdoor Kisan Shakti Sangatan. Welcome to all of you. Uh, Mr. Sompal, Jay. this linkage you know, between higher prices of food and benefit to the farmers, how far is it valid? It's not at all valid and I wish that it would have been valid. It could have been there, but unfortunately it's not so. I'll give you a classic case of uh, day before, the, this year before case, right. when the Arhar ki dal, the Tur dal was selling at a time at 105 per kg, while the farmer as MSP had received only 28 to 32 rupees per kg, that means 2,800 to 3,200 per quintal, which was the minimum support price fixed by the government. So this benefit of uh, inflation, the so-called benefit which Mr. Bainey probably has talked, though I have not had it direct from him and I don't know whether he has been quoted out of context as some people say, but if it is, if it be true what, uh, what is reported, then it is wholly erroneous there is no connection between the inflation measured in terms of the retail prices that are to be paid by the consumers and those received by the farmers. There is no link at all. So, Mr. Shastri, what you are trying to say is that even though the procurement prices of many of these items have gone up dramatically in the last several years, the, actually the benefit is not reaching the farmers, the real farmers. Yes, that is another anomaly and uh, this is another vagary which the farmer comes across. If you take the case of minimum support prices, you know that this regime is applied to 24 commodities in all. Yes. And out of those 24, hardly four or five get the MSP covered in terms of assured buyback by the government. The leading grains are rice and wheat, the so-called elite grains then sugarcane and cotton, barring these, whenever the prices have ever tended to go below the MSP, these have not been protected by the government. Even in case of the rice and wheat, these arrangements of assured purchase are available only in a few states, including Punjab, Haryana, West UP, Eastern Rajasthan and Andhra Pradesh and now of late in Madhya Pradesh. I know a a uh, very senior friend, a political person who is former minister of the union government, Mr. K. K. Tiwari of Bihar, who had to sell his rice uh, last year at 650 per quintal against the MSP of 1100 plus. What? And these are the anomalies that are there. So there is no connection between MSP and the inflation at all. So far as the farmers' prices, those realized by the farmers are concerned. Okay, let me come to Nikhil. Nikhil, you people work among the farmers. You are, you know, you are uh, at the grassroots level. You you are uh, constantly in touch with the farmers. Do you see any any benefit to the farmers when the prices uh, when the prices go up? No, absolutely not. Because this food inflation is actually fueled by a food shortage. Uh, in part. It's fueled by international circumstances in part. And the farmers have never got actually the price that they deserve. The people who have benefited from inflation always, if anyone, or who have protected themselves is the trading community because they never make a loss. They make sure that whatever they sell, they have sufficient margins. And if any profiteering is done, it is done by middlemen. Mm. So 
in and in a country like india where actually 80% of small and marginal farmers many of whom inflation doesn't mean that they benefit out of one commodity inflation means that prices are going up across a range of commodities and actually they are consumers Absolutely. so without getting any benefit of a sales price they are having to pay out much more this year is a year of drought where in any case there is a crisis and so the the whole idea is is very strange that food inflation would somehow benefit the farmers it does not do so at all it would have to mean reform in the whole minimum support price support to agriculture income support to farmers so that they get today they are not talking about profiteering or benefiting they are really talking about survival and that is that is the question that we have to deal with okay uh, i have here in the studio with me mr krishan bir choudhury the president of the bharat krishak samaj mr choudhury uh is there a food shortage we we keep hearing this year the agriculture ministry the government has said that we have had record production agriculture production has been a record production yes so uh there is no food shortage there is no shortage there is no shortage no, not prices are high mr beni prasad verma says prices are high farmers it will benefit the farmers you as the president of a bharat krishak krishak samaj being a farmer yourself how do you look at this i can quote a few examples before the government before the country what happened when the procurement of wheat being done by the government agencies at that time how much they were paying to farmers farmer was selling his wheat less than uh, msp mm. in the market in open market it's a fact and now the other commodities sompal ji were talking about the arhar ki dal tuhur dal yes it's happening everywhere it's a due to future trading that's a big cause they have captured the big powers the big corporates of this country have captured the, uh, this whole food community due to future trading uh, relaxation it has been given Absolutely. and another example i will quote the uh, we are talking about the vegetable price rise in vegetable yes yes he talks he, of dal atta vegetables i i am coming on that yes he should know that what happened in the productivity in the rainy season it goes down but he is not getting any benefit from the market if you see the price is, is, is he, it he doesn't get benefit from the market is it one of the problems is the storage problem no storage is another problem that, that needs a cooling chain to be provided right. at at grassroots level which which has uh, is still we are waiting for that but we have to protect the farmers from this policies why the government is not going to fix the percentage of the retailers and wholesalers w- what is the problem with the government this is a big question with the country that government is not going to fix the fixed percentage for wholesalers for retailers then the price can be checked the consumers can be saved the farmers can get the is proper it? price is still the national farmers commission recommendation which submitted in 2007 to government is still it's pending the, the swaminathan why oh, dr m swaminathan commission report is right. still it's pending why it's not uh, accepted it should be accepted by the government okay uh, mr sompal the two interesting points raised by mr choudhury one is about the futures trading the second is about he says why can't the government fix percentages is this, is this something you have been a minister of agriculture yeah. you have been in the planning commission you have been in the finance commission you have you know you have seen the system what where are the, where are the problems as far as future trading is concerned it is a separate issue but let us first discuss about this fixing percentage is it a, is it a valid is it a viable uh, suggestion you see uh, i agree with you that future trading is a different story and there can be two opinions and at particular points of time if it is perceived that future trading is doing harm to the uh, pricing system and bringing in unnecessary uh, instability uh, the there there is a trigger mechanism and the future trading is barred for that particular time so but i don't here hold this as much responsible as the lack of will on the part of government and when i say government all governments taken together ever since independence and even during the uh, the british rule the policy of keeping farm prices suppressed so far as the farmer is concerned has unfortunately been continued even in the post independence period and i agree with the uh, krishnavir choudhury 
that there is a strong case for making some relationship between the prices received by the farmers and those paid by the consumers. Absolutely. And the Essential Commodities Act 1966 does empower the government in all ways to fix such prices, including the MSP, because the classical case of Arar ki Dal that I have given is, uh, is, is becomes relevant on everyday basis when it comes to perishables like vegetables and fruit, right. where the farmer gets not even one fourth of the prices that are paid by the farmers, by the, the consumers, consumers within 24 hours of the commodities reaching the market, the bundies. So there is uh, some, some rationale, rather not some rationale, there is a very strong ground for the government to have some sort of price band policy, which I have suggested even in writing in my all capacities and even last year to the Honorable Prime Minister, that there has to be some uh, defined gap between the prices paid to the farmers or received by farmers and prices yelled out by the consumers. Okay. Nikhil, is this one of the reforms which you are talking about? Is this something which is uh, which you people think will, will, will uh, you know, bring about some reforms and help the farmers? Yeah, I think this is definitely the whole thing is that firstly, we need to move towards a trend of understanding that the markets have not actually benefited the farmers. This idea that the market will benefit the farmers, the markets have benefited the traders. And that's why both what Mr. Sompal is saying, and I, I agree with both of them, that we will have to make sure that the farmer gets a full share of what the consumer is paying. And we will have to actually impose many of these policies which don't allow markets. Future trading is another form. It's the most uh, peculiar form of a market where actually commodities are not don't even exist. being traded. Yeah. But just prices are, tra tra yeah, traders are just making money out of just prices. So traders and people who are actually playing with money. Right. So we need to get out of these peculiarities of what is called the free market system, but which is not free market, it's a manipulated market. And we need to make sure that farmers get remunerative prices, get minimum support prices and higher, those prices are made higher, that the agricultural sector proper attention is paid to it. And we need to understand that those who are at that end suffering year after year, actually all these very many, what we see as prices and what we see as inflation is out of a whole range of issues, many of which farmers, if, if those middlemen and their profits are cut out, farmers can benefit and the economy as a whole can benefit. Is it, uh, Mr. Chaudhary, we keep talking of you know, cutting out the middlemen, cutting out... I mean, is it practically possible? In the, you, 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 you live and work and you know function in rural areas, in semi-rural areas. Is this something which is practically possible in this country at all? Okay, but people is talking, especially if you uh, ex so-called expert, that we should change the market. Market should be handed over to big corporations. Yes. No, it's not the way. Now, that is the, the next, big fish. In fact, the next the, debate the big is fish the FDI and retail will, will eat come back. the small fishes. Right now. The profit divided by three, four persons at first stage, at village to block level, I can say, then village, village to block to the Mandi. That is the second stage, the wholesaler. And then from wholesaler to another retailer, that is the third stage. Uh, prices depend upon the area wise also. Right. The same product. The same potato, same tomato, you can get the, uh, uh, by the 20 rupees per kg and the same product will get uh, 30 or 40 rupees per kg. This is the way. No, but there are, there have been certain. There is there, no check no, in balance. There, there have been certain uh, experiments in this country, very successful experiments of cooperative farming where the farmer directly goes and, you know, the, the, the the we farm, have started. The, between the farmer and the consumer. Yes, yes. We yeah. have started. Minimum in, number of people involved. Yeah, yeah. My, my Maharashtra unit have started. Yes. They, they have taken their own transports on behalf of farming community, not in a cooperative sector, but on behalf of farming community. They are procuring and they are supplying to Mumbai. The big hotels, markets, consumers, they are trying to make a new way. Just another example we have in Erode. Government should permit the farmers 
he should sell his product in mandi in market direct to consumer this is my another question why, why, why the government is not giving permission to farming community they they can't sell they they, they in erode there is a platform i have provided to farming community they come with their produce and they sit there and they sold it but in country it's not easy but mr choudhury the way, it's very interesting that those the proponents of fdi in retail when they talk of this big retail groups coming in they say that they will eliminate this middleman and it will be they will they will have directly they will be dealing with the farmers and the farmers are going to benefit how they eliminate how much they are paying in the uk how much they are paying in the us in us in fruit and vegetable sector they are paying 28% 29% it's official data available in in dairy sector they are paying 30 to 35 cent per dollar out of dollar they are paying only 35 cent in uk the uk competition commission report have given his opinion to their government that they are making they are making lot, lot of hindrance in the name of quality and they are not paying the proper price to producer and as well as they are getting too much from consumer then okay. it's, will, it's an international we will, record. No, we will continue this discussion. Uh, we need to go into a short break now. Please keep watching. We'll come back and continue this very interesting discussion which we're having. Welcome back. We are discussing the a union minister's statement that inflation helps farmers and asking the question, uh, do farmers really gain from inflation? Mr. Sompal, um, yeah. Mr. Sompal, you know, one of the things which are which the proponents of FDI, the same question which I was asking Mr. Chaudhary, the proponents of FDI says that if the FDI is allowed and the, these big retail uh, chains will be able to eliminate the middlemen and they will be a di they'll directly be dealing with farmers and so that will help the farmers. You, do you agree with that theory? You see, before going into that, though it's a very important and burning topic, but in this context, I would like to remind you and the, and the listeners and the viewers that there is uh, for a long time pending several reports, recommendations of which have been accepted by the governments time and again for reforming the APMC, that is Agriculture Absolutely. Produce Marketing Committee Act, which right. was brought in, you may recall, to tackle the holders and profiteers Absolutely. and pass on remunerative prices to the farmers and make the consumers pay reasonable prices. But this has not happened. So far as the market conditions are concerned, I clearly find that the free market does not exist for the farmer. Farmer is forced to bring his produce to certain points where under the government tutelage and support and protection, the licensee traders make maximum profit Thank and you. the middlemen uh, take the larger share of the cake. So APMC Act has to be reformed first. And if that does not work, and there is no reason that it does not work, because as I said, government have ample powers why, to do that. Mr. But why, why is yes. it that we are not brooming our own house and asking the multinationals to come and clear my room, which is not possible? Why, Mr. 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 Sompal, you have been in the government. You, you, you understand how the systems work. You are, you are part of the Congress party now. You have been with me. You know, you have seen all the political parties. Where does the problem lie? What, what, the, well, the, what Western interests are working in, in, in ensuring that this doesn't work, this, this, this uh, reforms in the APMC doesn't work? Yes, responding to your first question, I very candidly told you that there is acute lack of will and all parties stand on the same footing in this respect. Irrespective of the party, irrespective of affiliation, I've been trying uh, very hard all other people have been doing so. Shankarlal Guru Committee report, the observations in the 10th plan, in the 9th plan, in the 11th plan document, all advocate that the agricultural marketing system needs big reform, which is not being done. So my uh, very brief answer to your question is, 
it is lack of political will, nothing else. And if it be so, it is very feasible, very practicable and very desirable, not only economically in terms of equitable sharing and benefiting the producer and the farmer, eliminating the middleman chain, but also earning enduring popularity to the government, which unfortunately is not understood by the powers that be belonging to any, any political party. Nikhil, Nikhil the, the issue of yeah, FDI I agree with Mr. Sompal and yeah. yeah. Yeah, FDI is just handing over even to even more powerful moneyed corporate interests. Today, the reason that the AAPMC Act is not working at all and no reform is being brought in, and even if the reform is brought in, it will never work, is because our entire structure is in the hands of moneyed interests. So it is not just that the government licensed people are not working, they're working hand in glove with private traders. And therefore, all these markets completely act on behalf of private traders and government is not an interest even standing in that place, leave alone the consumer at the bottom end or the producer. Neither of them have any, any of, a, they are not the ones who, who benefit. We bring in FDI, profit making is, FDI and retail, profit making is the objective of these huge corporate, uh, corporates. They will come in, they will not only control the markets, they will control vast sectors of this. And what we keep saying, yes, it will bring money into this country, but that money will go to whose benefit? And that money will cr create profits for whom? That's something we need to think about. We need to move in the direction of looking at producers, their needs, and eliminating middlemen and making sure that the, the money that is paid by consumers goes to the producers themselves. It requires a new kind of reform away from the so-called free market economy, away from trying to get corporate money in, and for the government to take a stand on behalf of the agricultural sector. It's okay. an extremely important thing. Okay. Uh, uh, we, are, we are joined by Dr. Suman Sahai, chairperson of the Gene Campaign. She's, uh, she has been held up in traffic, but anyway, welcome, uh, Suman. Thanks. Suman, I, you know, we, we don't have much time, but you know, I just want to ask you, we have, we have discussed various things, but when, when the linkages between higher prices, and that was the issue, the, high, the linkages between higher prices and how it will benefit the farmer, the inflation, how inflation benefits the farmer. What is your uh, view on that? It's ridiculous to suggest that inflation will benefit the farmer because inflation happens when there's not enough production. And the farmer is so squeezed you, 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 you also believe in this theory that shortage creates inflation? Of course. Shortages create inflation. When the farmer is insecure, uncertain, does not have uh, backup support, does not have market, then he is in a terribly vulnerable position. That creates inflation. We've seen it before. We're seeing it again. And it's ridiculous to suggest that when you have uh, prices going through the roof, then the farmer is benefiting. I mean, who's so naive to believe that? Not the farmer and not the consumer benefits. This is an absolute distortion of the system and an utter and complete mismanagement of the food supply. And this is happening at a time when we are extremely vulnerable on the part of agriculture. We've had this really wretched monsoon. We are facing climate change in a long-term perspective, so we, we do not anticipate things getting better. And instead of getting into an act and starting to get our act together yesterday, we are waffling and, and making these ridiculous statements, and it is so unfortunate in, there that is, a there, senior there, minister there, makes this there statement. Is a, there, there is an argument that, in fact, it is the other way around. Instead of the farmers benefiting from high inflation, it is the government which benefits from high inflation. Well, certainly the middleman benefits from the <laughs> um, high inflation and whatever the connection between the middleman and the government might be. Um, uh, the, certainly the farmer and the consumer are both losers, and it benefits nobody. It certainly does not benefit the Indian economy. What is the, uh, Mr. Chaudhary, you know, we, we, when we talk of farmers, as uh, Nikhil was pointing out, 80% are small and marginal yes, farmers. Yes, yes. And, you know, how vulnerable do they become when, they, when, when, when high inflation strikes? Unlike, un, un, unlike what Mr. Beni Prasad, does Beni Prasad Verma mean that it, it, it benefits the small and marginal farmers? Beni Prasad Verma should accept the reality that farmer is the largest consumer in this country also. He is the worst sufferer from inflation, inflation side. And he's not getting any benefit in the present condition. And the price rise, 
where is the responsible farmer is not responsible for the ararki dal absolutely it's it's in the field not in the market absolutely we let me, let me, let me, is let me, in the stores let me get in mr sompal mr sompal there is another you know uh, the argument of certain some economists about inflation versus growth they say that as long as growth is there inflation doesn't matter <laughs> this, is, this is a very it's serious again, argument. Yeah. This is a very serious it's argument. It's of the, again a very in the, in the, in the present the in the present very, government. There are a lot of people who make this argument. You see, very irrelevant statement from farmers' point of view because what is the measure of growth again is very uh, fallacious and anomalous in the sense that the additional GDP. where it goes who it belongs to and whether there is a an equitable uh, devolution of the additional fruits of economic activity measured in terms of gdp this has been uh, 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 contested by many economists the world over so i don't accept that just mere growth will take care of inflation okay. because inflation hits Uh, particular pockets and particular sections, particularly the lowly paid people, the, the wage class. earners, and also fixed uh, pay earners, and also farmers. As uh, Krishnavir has rightly observed, that farmers, in a great measure, are customers, consumers also, and the things that they have to buy, and if they inflate, they have to pay through their nose. So it's not correct to say that growth itself will take care of inflation. Okay, uh, yes. Nikhil, last words to you. the the how do you see the government reacting in the coming days to this problem of high inflation as far as the farmers are concerned and what do you think they should do quickly i agree with suman that the government has shown very little initiative to either control inflation or deal with the problems of the farmers i think that it requires a real national effort it require it is a very bad year it's a bad year in terms of drought it's a bad year in terms of internationally the us is facing one big drought where food is going to have a big factor the government needs to move in to say that we will not leave ourselves to the mercy of the market so called market manipulated market we will make sure that the farmers do have support in terms of both income and prices and we will make sure that the consumers do not pay what the middleman is taking away but the consumers only pay directly we need to make some interventions so that there is a direct transfer from the producer to the consumer and this year there are many who have not been able to produce we will have to make sure that they have income support to see them through this okay. year so that they can farm okay. in the year in the next year okay as uh, suman last words to you we completely run out of time my no um, my question is hmm. my very brief briefly we are we are hearing from the government from all from all sources all the sources that there has been record agricultural production and you are talking of inflation in the times of shortages you know who which record uh, production just because certain areas have produced certain and this and this whole visual mythology of uh, storage space being less and therefore it looks like a lot of production the fact is that we are talking about food security we are talking about inflationary pressure and who will have food and who will not have food we have known forever that food security means household food security means food sovereignty we can't lose okay. track of these two we, things we, have, uh, we don't talk about national averages we talk about households who are either hungry or fed okay uh, we are completely run out of time the fact is all the four panelists today agree that the statement that high inflation benefits farmers is is a myth and this is something which nobody is willing to agree the well the union minister who has made this statement uh, probably will will rethink about what he has said but there is there's a larger issue involved about how the government will deal with the issue of inflation thank you very much thanks to all my guests mr sopal shastri nikhil day suman sahai and uh, krishnbeer choudhary please keep watching we'll come back with another issue on the big picture at the same time tomorrow